Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, coffee moaners. Good morning. Let me just make sure that's off. That's off. Good morning, all of you. How are you all? Hopefully you all saw Nadia on a, a Insta Live. If you're listening on podcast, if you're not listening on podcast and you're not watching this and you have find some miraculous way of listening to us, hi. Don't know how you've done that. Um, obviously, Nadia has taken a mini break today um, from, uh, from the uh, coffee moaning. Um, she's in the background. You can probably hear her making a cup of tea. She'll probably turn the kettle on in a minute, which will be deeply, deeply annoying. There she is. Hey, sweetie, are you good? No. I'm not, not good, good today. I'm not good. I'm really, really struggling with the situation in Gaza. And so I think it's better that I'm not live because I can't trust myself. So I hand you over to my rather brilliant husband. So I am the monk that knocks. Okay? I am the monk that knocks. I will come knocking with a bowl of gruel. How are we all, everyone? I know it's just, oh, mate, oh, guys. Look, we just, we've asked a series of very straightforward questions in the title of today's Coffee Moaning. Is Netanyahu evil? I think we have to ask these questions, probing questions, important questions. Is Keir Starmer shit? I think we need to ask that question too. Is Rishi short? Not that there's a problem with shortness. I'm not particularly high myself, but is he? I think so. If we needed proof that Brexit is bollocks, we've had proof given to us today. Various meats, cheeses and cut flowers will now not be able to get into the country. What a load of old bollocks. And is Mark mad? Well, we've all known the answer to that for a long time. But he's getting madder. He's getting madder. Um, Oh, guys, what a sorry state we're in. What a bunch of absolute morons we've got for excuses of leaders around the world. I mean, just a shambolic, shameful bunch of turds. A bunch of turds that are all pretending that they care and know what they're... I've got a really, really... I, you know what? I've never signed up to the lizard theory, but I, I can beginning to see why people do. But of course, if you say that, you disqualify everything you're saying. I just wonder if we, does anyone remember that series on television, V, where just suddenly they all started to unzip themselves, literally, I mean, a zipper, that's quite something, isn't it? And underneath, there were lizard-like, troglodyte type things. I'm beginning to wonder, because I'm asking you all now, get photographs of Starmer, Sunak, Biden, Trump, and Netanyahu, right? Get screenshots of all of them. Zoom right in on their eyes. There's no one there. There is no one there. They're moving. No one's there. And when I say that, there's no heart. And now I'm beginning to wonder whether to be a successful, in inverted commas, political leader or politician, I'm beginning to worry that humanity is no longer in politics. Shark eyes, Ellen. You know the eyes that go blank as they go into bite and the eyes, well, in fact, the eyes, do they roll back or they just go, <gasps> oomph? They're not real. They're not real. They're not real. How can you be real? Okay, so let's, let's get into the news. Let's, let's talk about this stuff. Now, what I thought we would do given that we are being force-fed like poor old geese, the mainstream media here. And, you know, look, uh, a lot of people say, well, we're seeing both, you know, the BBC. I know a lot of people say the BBC are, are, are biased this way and that way. The problem with the BS, BBC, BBC, the problem with the BBC is that they, they are accused of bias always, all the time. So they're kind of, you know, but... Anyway, you, you, you only have to watch the Coffee Moaning uh, Saturday papers to know that most of our newspapers are right-leaning or have rather conveniently circumnavigated the entire findings of the International Court of Justice last week. Um, they are real, Anthea, and it's so sad. Um, so I thought what we'd do is we'd run through the Al Jazeera's uh, assessment of what's going on in the Israel war in Gaza. 
So the death toll, some of the news inf pieces of big, big top news information, we, and we'll digest some of this. So death toll is now nearing 27,000. Isn't it funny? Just the simplest thing is of, the, of the death toll. But this is reported by Hamas. So do we really trust it? Can we really trust it? Every Israeli death has a name. Every Palestinian death has a number. Just bear with me one sec. Back in the room. Back in the room. I really want to challenge Netanyahu to a dance off. I really do. I want to challenge them all to a dance off. I want to dance opposite them and look into their blank eyes and kind of go, follow me, follow me, follow me. That's what I want to do. So let's just digest that. Sorry, before, God almighty, the doorbell went. 27,000, but is it really ever, do you think that what the Western media have managed to do is that because that number comes from the Ministry of Health in Palestine, which is run by Hamas, it means that we should never really take that number seriously. There is an ontological Schrodinger's cat insanity to what is going on with language and the way in which this war is being conducted. It's madness. It's madness. You're, you're, you're unable now to be able to, you know, say anything because everything's been weaponized by propaganda and the media. Everything. Every single aspect of explaining or describing or feeling, potentially feeling compassion for what's happening in uh, Gaza has been weaponized. They've poisoned the well for so many people, not everyone, lots of people who are happy birthday, Angie, so it's quite a, an intense day for a happy birthday shout out. Um, they've met, they, that's the, they haven't succeeded because otherwise those people wouldn't be on marches, marching for peace, not marching for hate, marching for peace. And, you know, let's ask the question, why are you talking about the hostages? We, ceasefires and stopping this war works for everyone. This, it works for everyone because what people would have you think is that by calling for a ceasefire, you're somehow saying, oh, let Hamas... Re no, no, a ceasefire is the start of the process. The ceasefire is the first... Look, this is the lunacy of the situation is this. At some point, even Netanyahu is going to run out of bullets. Maybe not because Biden will keep selling them to him. But at some point, even Netanyahu, there has to be an end of some form. Maybe... Once, I mean, the BBC reported yesterday, oh, this is, a, this is a curious report. At least, at least 50% of Gaza's buildings are damaged or destroyed. This is a weird one. This is a weird one. I think some people can get more on board with the idea that buildings have been destroyed than people have died. It's weird. So think about that. Over 50% of all buildings in Gaza have been destroyed. When we look at images from World War II of Coventry, Dresden, the carpet bombing, and we all look at them and we go, never, we all went never again. And you study them in history and you go, oh my God, this is, you know, the fact that we have radio broadcasters like Nick Ferrari invoking the bomb carpet bombing of Dresden as an historical example of when it's sometimes appropriate to kill civilians, suggesting that warfare, diplomacy and life hasn't moved on, is sensationally medieval and petrifying. So just think about that. So, Israel tomorrow, with, and believe me, round the corner, there's going to be a moment. There's going to be a moment where the wet, where Rishi in his, his short trousers, even though he's short, so how short his trousers are, God knows. Rishi, Keir, Biden, they're all going to go, oh, look, here's the ceasefire. <laughs> oh, congratulate us all, there's the ceasefire. And, and Netanyahu's going to go, oh, we'll stop shooting people. And you know what? There'll be nothing left. And then they'll say, oh, go home. Everyone go home. And we'll sort this out now. There'll be, there's nowhere to go to. 
There's nowhere to go to. Go where? There's no schools. There's no hospitals. There's no homes. Wow. But be prepared. Be prepared. Because what's going to come very, very soon is Israel, Netanyahu specifically, because not all Israelis are on board with Netanyahu. Far from it. Listening to a wonderful... Uh, God, who is she? Jewish lady. I, I wrote her name because she was so, it was so oh, refreshing to hear this woman speak. Where is her name? Hannah Weisfeld, who is looking for a sensible... She, she's, a, she's a representative of a, of a Jewish organisation that's looking for a sensible political solution to this that, that results in a two-state solution that works. That... What... The Zionist Israeli government wants us to think, and sadly so do the West, by supporting them and indulging them in their narcissistic carpet bombing and destruction of an entire race. What they want us to think is that even calling for a two-state solution is somehow um, anti-Semitic. And if you think about what that is, that, that, that is an incredibly manipulative, fake, fraudulent and inaccurate sort of weaponizing of finding any solution. So let's just scroll back a bit. 50% of all buildings have been destroyed. Just awful, just awful. Injured, hungry, and alone. The number of orphans, the number of orphans, right, let's have a look. Uh, there is a, the Gazan children orphaned by war. Thousands of them, thousands and thousands of them. And this woman who was on the radio earlier today, Hannah Weisfeld, was saying, by bombing and destroying Gaza in the, in the way that it, it, they are doing, you are strengthening, strengthening radicalization. You are strengthening extreme responses. You are strengthening the argument to do something as awful as October the 7th. It's totally counterproductive. It is totally counterproductive. And what is weird is that there's a sort of, it's not, it's not even the blinkered, rabid inability to see it of Netanyahu and their government, it, which is, which is one thing. It's a little bit like my intolerance with Starmer is more extreme than it is with Rishi. It's the fact that the West aren't doing anything about this. So looking at over 20,000 off, I mean, those orphans are hardly going to grow up with a sunny concept of their neighbours, are they? They're not like, oh, yes, no, of course, Israel's our friend. They killed my entire family. So let's have a, let's have a little whittle, whittle through. So the death toll is nearing 27,000. More and more people are being detained in the West Bank. No one is talking about the West Bank. No one is talking about the West Bank, which incidentally and oddly, the West Bank of Palestine is where most of the illegal settlements and the constant constraints are placed on ordinary Palestinian people trying to live their lives alongside Israeli and Jewish people. The conditions there and the constant apartheid-like restrictions on e economics, on, on the running of businesses, on the schools, etc., is done in such a way that it beggars belief that there hasn't been the same thing that's kicked off over there. It's, this is the, the, Israel has already been acting illegally, but no one has had any interest in flagging that up before October the 7th. No one was flagging up the way in which they were just allowed to kind of, you know, increase illegal settlements. Obama briefly mentioned it once. So, more Palestinians detained in the West Bank. Why? Because they're being accused of extremism, potentially Hamas behaviour. This is, lose titles, let's lose names, let's forget names, let's call Hamas poo poo. Let's call it poo poo. You bomb and control an entire country, you're going to get people who sign up to p -p -p. So let's call it another name. This idea, they're fighting, Netanyahu's claim that we're going to clear Hamas out is absolute nonsense. You, you, can't, you can't remove the resentment of control and apartheid 
by enacting more control and apartheid. Oh, hang on. Who in the world has experience of this? South Africa. Mandela. Let's all remember what Mandela was to the West for a long time, to the white imperialist colonialist man. He was a terrorist. And then he lived an extraordinarily long life, which allowed mood and sentiment to change. And the only hope in the embers of this totally unforgivable stain on humanity is that that too will eventually happen. And won't we be in a really strange situation that something as reprehensible and awful as October the 7th functioned as some kind of litmus test, not necessarily to World War III, but to awaken a whole horrendous 75 years. Nothing justifies violence, but nothing justified the violence prior to October the 7th. Nothing. But no one talks about it because it doesn't suit the narrative. It doesn't suit the neat narrative of being incandescent. It doesn't suit the neat narrative of not admitting you're wanting to remove the Palestinian population, but kind of doing it in such a way that there are no buildings left because no one can go anywhere. Oh, maybe they'll have to move. Maybe that's why lots of these journalists are evacuating or having to escape because they literally have no choices. Oh, forced migration. Ah, oh, I see. Mm. Leaders of the United Nations have asked for, for, for the countries that have ceased funding for the UNRWA to reconsider. Because what have Israel and the West managed to do now? They've managed to weaponize and demonize the United Nations yet again because of a few bad eggs. How many bad eggs are we seeing on a daily basis on social media within the IDF? Does that disqualify the right to have the IDF? Presumably not. Likewise, in an organization of 12,000 uh, aid workers, 30,000, 30,000, whatever, 12. Based on what evidence? Let's see the evidence first. And here's an irony, here's a deep irony. There are extreme right Israeli politicians who are themselves saying, no, 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 we need to stop this total, total ban of aid support for the UNRWA. Why? You're not going to believe this. Leaked documents and discussions. It's going to, the, the, the uh, humanitarian catastrophe will be so fast and so extreme. Get this. This is the curious logic that's working in certain quarters of the Israeli government. We need to reverse this decision about the aid to this organization, which we were a minute ago saying stop the aid because the humanitarian crisis will be so bad. Do you know what, guess what? We won't be able to continue our assault and attack on Gaza. I've never heard of a more perverted, skewed, twisted logic. We have overindulged a narcissistic toddler that is now a narcissistic teenager. And that is why, that is why this stuff is spilling onto social media. This is why the International Court of Justice doesn't need to look anywhere other than just go on the social media platforms. Because I tell you what, sure as hell, none of the mainstream media platforms are playing that stuff. And interestingly, all of the journalists on mainstream media outlets are very kind of like, oh, well, you know, what can we see on these social media things? The assumption being that A, the platforms themselves aren't trying to sort of work out what's fake and what isn't, and B, that they might be sort of, you know, giving us a narrative that is just too discomforting. So I'm sure, I'm sure, I wonder, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Keir, when he said, oh, well, I'm asked to watch all these films all the time, you know, I wonder if he's watched any of them. Or does he just watch what the BBC gives, puts out, or Radio 4 or whatever. And that's not to say that all of what, I don't agree that all of what the BBC's put out is biased one way or the other. Weird, eh? 
Ask Israeli far-right politicians asking for aid to go back to the UNRWA so they can, can justify the bombardment. <laughs> because, of course, there's the claim that this is about getting Hamas. But Hamas is a non-specific thing. It's an idea. It's an ideology. And it's an ideology that is being, the, you know, the extreme aspects of it that have the horrendous consequences of violence. There should be no violence from either side to anyone about anything. But it didn't all start on October the 7th. And this is where the frustration with the likes of Starmer uh, kicks in. This steadfast refusal, or no, not refusal, his steadfast desire to oversimplify this is unforgivable in a human rights lawyer. So human rights, according to Starmer, are purely conditional on he, who he considers to be having their human rights, you know, egregiously kind of, you know, taken advantage of. Oh, it's all conditional. It's all conditional. I mean, just go to Kamala Harris's um, democratic conventional little kind of shindig that she had in, in Las Vegas yesterday or the day before. Two women wearing hijabs, not allowed in. Why? They're wearing hijabs. Nancy Pelosi, stand in front of a car protesting about Gaza. You're from China. You're Chinese propagandists. Oh, hang on. These are Democrats. Oh. Steadfast refusal to see anything that doesn't chime with a jaundiced, preconceived notion of this crisis. Staggering. Unforgivable. Criminal. David Cameron yesterday. What did David Cam David Cameron, naughty boy. We scoffed, which is right, when, you know, there was the headline. David Cameron says there's reason to believe that there could be a state of Palestine one day. Fucking hell, the fact that that has to even be written is quite phenomenal. Phenomenal? Phenomenal. <gasps> but guess what? Cameron... Naughty boy, Tory backlash after Cameron calls for Palestinian state to end the Gaza conflict. I mean, how unforgivable that in whatever the end game is, we should suggest that there should be a Palestinian state. As Keir Starmer himself said, he will no longer subscribe to the unilateral call for a Palestinian state. There has to be a two-state solution. The fact that Starmer has connected those two things up is the most unforgivable development in his policy in the Middle East yet. Because even Cameron hasn't said that yet. And the point being, a two-state solution is what everyone's after. But if imagine this. Imagine if someone was to say, Israel can't unilaterally declare itself a nation. Everyone, rightly, would be screaming genocide, ethnic cleansing, anti-Semitism. But it's absolutely fine the other way. So, God, who thought from a sort of a sarcastic response to Cameron yesterday, we get to a point where, my God, he seems like a radical. <gasps> what does that make Cameron? Is he a hate marcher? Oh, things are weird. Things have got very, very weird. Oh, look, there's another update. Let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Oh, and the, the Israelis, rather, rather conveniently, they dumped a load of bodies in blue bags back. They didn't say why they'd taken them. I, I suppose, you know, there'll be reasons. Real suffering, real pain. Aid workers in northern Gaza are saying that things are on the verge of famine. Oh, you know, just go to all the social media accounts of so many far-right Israeli politicians and they'll be like, oh, this is hyperbole. Don't be so ridiculous. So Benjamin Netanyahu, his popularity in Israel is at 23%, but don't let this spin into the thought that, oh, if he goes, it's all going to be fine. It's a bit like here. It's like, care for what you wish for. You know what you're dealing with, even though he's an absolute... I mean, this is so tied into his survival. 
And, you know, we're all watching with bated breath as to what's going to happen in terms of Biden. Does he know where Iran is? I mean, that's the question. He's walking into flagpoles left, right and centre. I mean, does he know where Iran is? Does he, has he got a comp? I mean, he doesn't, he seems like he's always on holiday. No, oh, hey, when he walks up to the press, doesn't he? So we're awaiting whatever the, their response is going to be. Um, allegedly, there is the potential for some kind of ceasefire agreement being discussed between Qatar, Egypt, um, and uh, the US, uh, Hamas are looking at this, but Hamas are saying that they want um, a withdrawal before the ceasefire can happen. The, here's an interesting fact for anyone who, who wants to, at this point, maybe, you know, fairly say, what about the hostages? Let's say, well, yeah, what about the hostages? Absolutely. Catastrophic, absolutely awful. But the best thing for the hostages that were released was they were released when there was a ceasefire. So Netanyahu has to stop connecting these two things. You know, the only hostage releases came um, when there were ceasefires or when there were humanitarian pauses. Now, of course, Netanyahu's uh, rationale is squeeze, 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 destroy, 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 make life as unbearable as possible for, for Hamas, but he's making it unbearable for the entire population of, of Gaza. Uh, and then we'll get the, the hostages. It's not really working, though, is it? I mean, it hasn't worked, has it? Has it worked? I'm trying to work out when have we had a hostage released whenever there's been a ceasefire, yeah? However brief. Is that right? Am I, or am I wrong? Am I being stupid and naive? Oh. Faith Goodman, I saw the end of Netanyahu press conference last night. He says until they have finished their objective, they won't stop. But the objective has no end. The objective has no end. Two-state solution can't progress mutually until Netanyahu goes and is replaced by someone more progressive. Absolutely agree. Anna Marie Shellard. My grandfather once said controversially that Saddam was a bastard, but now watch what crawls out when he's gone. Why does shit history just keep repeating itself? It's weird. No one wants to... Because people are more interested in having an emotional response. Of course, we're feeling emotional. But the emotional response that's happening towards the Palestinians. This is, okay, let's even sit with the self-defense argument, which we talked about at great length when October the 7th happened. We talked about the inevitability of a self-defense and a, a hit back and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, you know, the right to kind of have a response and feel hurt and feel aggrieved, aggrieved and everything. But we're four to five, you know, we are months in now, months in, months in. This is, this, and our mealy-mouthed, absolutely just simpering idiots, Rishi and Keir, just do one, as they say. Just do one. Absolutely do one. And, you know, and Keir Starmer, in his patholo it's a you know, it's a pathological fit, well... The Israeli lot, there's a lot of Israeli lobbied money in the, in, in, in the current Labour Party now. And of course, you know, the drive, which was right, you sh there, there should be no, no, no heed given to anti-Semitism, but it seems to be that this bit has got lost, or Islamophobia within the uh, policies or actions or attitudes of either any government, any political party. It would strike me that both the Labour and the Conservative Party's approach and attitude to Gaza and not calling a ceasefire is in and of itself Islamophobic. That would be my, my, my reading of it. And that is why the, uh, you know, pre, obviously there's a Muslim vote that votes Tory, there's a Muslim vote that votes Labour, but the Muslim vote that votes Labour is stepping away and the Muslim vote that votes for Biden is also stepping away. They won't necessarily go to the Conservatives, but they are stepping away. But he doesn't care. He doesn't care, he just wants to get into power, and he wants to get into power. Why does he want to get into power? Why does Keir Starmer want to get into power? What, what on earth is going on behind those empty eyes? What, what is there? There's nothing there. He's an automaton, but he was a human rights lawyer. It's so depressing. So depressing. It's just, just awful. Um, what other, other little notes I've got? So Cameron was in trouble. Unilateral recognition of Palestine. God, what an awful thing. Israel wants funding back to the United Nations, RWA, because they, so they can carry on attacking. 
Pelosi believes any demonstration is because of the Chinese. Kamala Harris thinks anyone in a hijab is a terrorist. I mean, come on. You're absolutely right. Of course Keir Starmer doesn't want the party to be... Why, why is it complicated to stand up to Israel and their current, um, uh, you know, foreign policy in Gaza and, and also not be... How, how, why is it complicated to do that and say we're, anti we're not anti-Semitic? The two aren't conflatable. It's the mainstream media that have conflated the two. And it's the parties that have conflated the two. It's outrageous. Outrageous. No one country owns the rights, the trademark on the word genocide or ethnic cleansing. No one, no one country owns that. Every different type of person and culture in the world has experienced so many different types of atrocities. You cannot then, in the name of owning that experience, hold it and then allegedly, and as the International Court of Justice say, plausibly enact the same thing. That is tyrannical and the entire world bar OK, there's a few countries other than the UK and, and the US. The rest of the world sees it like that. <sighs> Shambolic. I was going to talk about breathing because I feel like I need to do some breath work. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I will now. I was also going to talk about fasting for 24 hours, but I think I might fast. I might fast a bit. Anyway, there we go. What a bunch of absolute fucking morons. What a bunch of muppets. What a hopeless, shambolic set of spineless cowards that they can't, and stupid, spectacularly stupid, that they can't even trot out a vaguely complicated first thought, second thought. Come on, guys. Is, is the way to get in to simply say words? It's, we are dealing with the, the oh, get rid of them all. Get rid of them all. Get rid of all of these leaders. Absolutely hopeless. Shower. Anyway, guys, have a lovely day. Um, something is landing later. I can't remember what. Uh, we are doing a review of um, The Zone of Interest, which is an incredibly apt film for now, in the most unusual of ways, actually. Um, and uh, a vlog will be landing and, and other content, too. Um, sending you all love. And was it Angie? Angie, happy birthday. Sorry, it was a very... It did say in the headline... Probably not the greatest live to, to sing a happy birthday on. But anyway, there you go, guys. See you all on the other side of something.